morning, and a lovely morning it is. Uh, so this is our last day, as I said, it's just a two-day cruise. It's about six o'clock in the morning, and uh, we're gonna have breakfast. And there's a little story to that. So this is the cooktop that uh, General Boats provides. Uh, with a recycled Rhodes 22. Uh, it's a uh, burns butane and I have uh, two issues with this stove. Uh, one is that it uh, is kind of cheaply made out of sheet metal. It's uh, got about a hundred moving parts and uh, the failure of almost any of which would result in the stove would become unusable. It's got a, lots of safety uh, related uh, interconnections uh, in there. Uh, and the second uh, thing I don't like about this is that it um, it's hot, <laughs> it's, which is good for boiling water, uh, but even turned uh, way down, it tends to cook my eggs, we're having eggs this morning, uh, too fast. So Again, uh, going back to my backpacking days, I've got an alternative we're going to try this morning. This is an alcohol burning stove. Uh, this particular model would have been much too heavy for me to take backpacking. Uh, but uh, I don't count the ounces here on the boat, so uh, we're going to use it here. Hopefully that base is big enough that my frying pan will sit on it comfortably. Uh, and... Uh, the, the benefit of this, well, it serves as a backup, uh, as well as a slower cooker, and since it has uh, pretty much uh, no moving parts, um, there shouldn't be a, a problem keeping it operating. All right, well, that's not the prettiest uh, bacon and eggs uh, you're likely to ever see, but uh, it's going to taste good. Um, so that worked out all right. Uh, sorry I couldn't uh, get the uh, more of the action on film, but um, I was too busy to cook and work the camera at the same time. So after getting up at about 6, it took us about an hour to have breakfast and take care of our morning chores. And so we left Cockles Harbor at around 7. Uh, there was very little wind and an incoming tide and about two knots of current coming in the entrance channel and nowhere near enough wind to fight that. So we motored out set sails out at the entrance buoy uh, where the wind had picked up a little bit and we are currently on a heading that will take us to Plum Gut between the North Fork of Long Island and Plum Island uh, and at our current speed we should get there at about slack tide around 10 o'clock uh, which would be a very good thing We are through Plum Gut and now into Long Island Sound uh, and it was more exciting than I expected it to be. I'll uh, show you what I mean. Here's a uh, different map tech chart showing some of the same area and uh, Gardner's Bay and also showing Eastern Long Island Sound and Cockles Harbor's down here, Plum Gut is up here. 
Now, the, the weather forecast for today, and this is one of the reasons I chose Cockles Harbor as a destination, was south to southwest winds, which should have made uh, the entire um, sail back to New London area uh, easy and uneventful. But in fact, we have northwest winds, which meant I had to tack uh, through Plum Gut. Uh, fortunately, the ferry traffic uh, uh, wasn't running right at that moment for the most part, uh, so that wasn't the issue. But it's also a very popular spot with fishermen, and those guys are just uh difficult to deal with because <laughs> they just move around at random and it's it's uh they don't have the right of way but i suspect they don't really know that um but uh yeah, well we made it and uh we're now on a straight course uh down here for a buoy off new london to get back to pine island marina that's about 10 miles and uh we're doing pretty well uh things seem much calm now because we're on a nice uh, broad reach and uh, that's about two hours of pleasant sailing under sunny skies so while we're making our way eastward through eastern Long Island Sound towards home uh, it occurred to me that uh, I promised you a quick tour of changes to the boat uh, for this sailing season I'm going to go through these quickly. Uh, they're all, or for the most part, they're covered uh, to one extent or another in uh, one or another of the various project videos I did this spring. So if you want more details uh, about any of these, you'll have to uh, dig them out from one of those. So we're going to start at the aft end of the boat. So at the very aft end, we've got a solar panel and a frame I rigged up to hold that solar panel. Uh, the frame is made out of uh, stainless steel tubing and held together with bimini uh, fittings. Uh, the panel is a 100 watt panel and its purpose is uh, primarily to provide power for the new refrigerator, which we'll see in a minute. Replacing the electric winch uh, with a rope and pulley system uh, for uh, raising and lowering the outboard motor it is actually a project I did last year. Uh, there wasn't a dedicated video uh, on it. Um, but uh, <clears throat> we've uh, modified the system slightly. I tried a couple of variations, uh, especially how to, <laughs> how to run things at the top here. And uh, this seems to be my best solution so far with this uh, block with a uh, cam cleat built into it, suspended off the railing. Uh, the railing seems able to take the strain without any problem, and it works more smoothly this way than any other way I tried. And uh, I removed the winch altogether uh, this spring, and so the uh, switch used to be here, and I've just replaced it with uh, an aluminum plate to cover the hole. So I made some changes to how various lines were rigged here. Uh, so what we've added in terms of hardware is this halyard organizer, which, uh, let's try the other side, maybe that'll come up better there, uh, is at the base of the mast under the uh, What's that called? Well, the place where the mast is attached. So I took this off and drilled um, matching uh, holes for the screws under here and put it all back on. So that gives me a place to attach various blocks uh, <clears throat> for running lines down the mast. And then through these deck organizers and then back to the aft end of the cabin. So uh, this one, forward to port, is the topping lift that used to run uh, over here, uh, now comes straight down the mast, <clears throat> and back to the same 
uh, cam cleat it used before. Uh, this is the new outhaul or unfurling line for the Intermass furling mainsail. So that uh, comes back also to the uh, to the deck wall guys are back to the uh, aft end of the cockpit, uh, cockpit cabin. And this is the furling line for the IMF main, which is on the starboard side and also comes to a cam cleat at the back of the cockpit. And I have to say, this modification has not been a complete success, at least so far. Uh, I'll show you the issue. All right, what we're looking at is the gooseneck which is kind of a universal joint here where the boom uh, meets the mast. And this is not what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> this has been quite mangled. Uh, evidently, this arrangement for the furling and unfurling lines puts too much uh, strain on this, pulling essentially pulling the boom towards the mast. And uh, so, uh, there's uh, three main pieces in here, and several of them are quite bent. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to think uh, <laughs> about what to do about this. Uh, I believe the problem is much more to do with the furling line, uh, which puts a, there's a whole lot more force involved uh, with the furling line than the unfurling line. So, well, we'll keep you posted on what happens here. So here in the cabin, the biggest change is the new refrigerator, and uh, you can't uh, see very much that's different on the outside. Uh, we have uh, the control box for it here, mounted underneath the overhang for the counter, uh, <clears throat> and uh, down here is a vent uh, to supply airflow for the compressor that's mounted behind here. So uh, I'll give you a look inside. It's kind of hard to see inside here, but uh, so there's a shelf here because the compressor is underneath it. Um, so that's not inconvenient, really. And in here we've got the main area divided into two compartments uh, with, uh, well, a divider. Uh, so in the main compartment here, we've got some food in the back, and this is a bag of wine and other liquids. Now the, this is uh, a holding plate, uh, which um, uh, not only gets very cold, but it, it kind of stores up coldness. Uh, so this area uh, stays a little cooler than this area. Uh, current indications are that this area doesn't get cold enough to really uh, make ice, you know, in any practical sense, but it will keep ice, so some ice in there. Uh, while we're here in the galley, uh, we'll take a, take a look at the battery monitor, which isn't new, uh, but it's currently showing us uh, that we're getting around 3 amps. Uh, it's, it's varying quite a bit, uh, probably because the boat is rocking. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, three amps from the solar panel uh, into the system to uh, replenish the batteries, which were run down somewhat overnight um, by the refrigerator primarily. So here in the semi-enclosed head area, we've got uh, a new storage cabinet that uh, sits... Uh, behind our composting toilet. Uh, really could use a wide angle lens here. Uh, but uh, one of the changes uh, to the composting toilet was we added ventilation uh, this year. Um, so there's a little fan, computer fan inside this wooden block and there's a hose that runs underneath the galley cabinet and then up, up uh, into a into the cockpit in a way that uh, doesn't uh, compromise the watertight integrity of the boat at all. Um, 
but uh, there's one change with it. So down here we've also got some storage, we've got some cleaning supplies, and an extra roll of paper towels and toilet paper back there. Uh, then we've got a few shelves in here, um, you know, toiletries, a first aid kit, uh, more toiletry.